If you're looking for the tutorial showing you the advantage of using the target allocator, then this episode is for you. Welcome back to the Is It Observable YouTube channel. Today's episode is the technical tutorial of the feature introduced by the open telemetry community named the target allocator. The target allocator is a feature of the open telemetry operator. So if you want to learn more about the target allocator in general, I would recommend to watch the dedicated episode to it. If you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So let's see the various steps of this tutorial. So we'll start with an introduction explaining the various requirements of our tutorial environment. Then we will go through the environment and showing you what you'd expect to have in your Kubernetes cluster once you have deployed the environment. We'll start deploying the collector having the target allocator enabled uh, and we will mainly focus on a traditional scrap config. Then uh, we will showcase the usage of Kepler where there is a lot of metrics and a lot of labels that we probably don't need. So we will first uh, look at how we should configure the service monitor or the part monitor, including some relabeling configurations. Then we will deploy the, of course, the service monitor and the part monitor and enable uh, the Prometheus CR on our collectors. And you will see that automatically all those metrics will come into our Observe backend. Last, uh, we will focus on the target allocator service to look at the various endpoints that are exposed and see what you can actually do uh, if you want to basically uh, look or monitor the behavior of the target allocator. In this tutorial, we will create two distinct collectors. One deploy as a daemon set designed to collect logs and receive traces from our application, the open temperature demo. The second one would be dedicated to collect metrics. This collector would be deployed as a stateful set with two replica. We will explain the scrap config required, helping us to collect metrics from Istio and any um, pods having the Prometheus annotations. Then we will configure a service monitor designed to collect metrics from Kepler and we will play with the relabeling config roles. We will do the same deploy. We will look at the kubestat metrics and node exporter service monitor that we may deploy to collect those metrics. All of those metrics will be sent to Danatrace. So in this tutorial, we will need, of course, a Kubernetes cluster, uh, the cert manager, uh, the is, which is a requirements for the open telemetry operator. We will use Istio. So Istio will be deployed in this cluster. We will, of course, have a Danatrace tenant uh, to send the, the metrics to Danatrace. Uh, to be able to see the behavior of our cluster, we will deploy the Danatrace operator. We will deploy Kepler, uh, the Prometheus operator, including two main exporter, the CubeSet metrics and the node exporter. And last, we will have two web application running in the background to generate traffic. So the hipster shop on one end, instrumented by Danatrace, and the, on the other hand, generating 100% open telemetry is going to be the open telemetry demo. Like every tutorials that we deliver at Is It Observable, there is always a GitHub repo. So here we're looking, of course, just at the repository related to the target allocator. And uh, I'm not going to go through the, the requirements or explain what we need, but I'm going to briefly explain what we uh, we are going to use Dynatrace Trace uh, to send the data and, and look at the metrics and uh, and then make uh, the, the right actions out of that. So if you don't have any Dynatrace Trace tenant, not a big deal. You can click on Dynatrace trial. You will put your email and you will get a tenant to uh, run that tutorial. But Today, for this tutorial, we will need to ingest data uh, in Danatrace. So once you have your tenant, um, you will have to uh, open tokens. So access tokens, which is here with the key. And in the access token application, uh, we will create a fresh new token. So already, I already created one, so I don't need to create one, but I'm just remind you 
what type of uh, uh, rights you need uh, to uh, for this tutorial. Once we are in this page, you will have to give a name. So here we need two tokens, one for the operator. And instead of searching for all the scopes, of course you can do that, no problems. But uh, I would uh, suggest to use one of those uh, um, templates that has been pre-created. And here we want to use the Kubernetes Dynatrace operator. And here you can see all the right scope will be added and you can create generate tokens. Once you have generated a token, make sure to copy the value because it was be going to be displayed only once. Then the second token, so that's going to be for the operator token. Then you have a need an ingest token. And that ingest token, uh, we don't want to use any templates. Uh, we can search for ingest. And we're going to ingest uh, events, uh, metrics, uh, logs, uh, traces. Uh, and also what we would probably going to do is to be able to read, read metrics. Here it is. And once we have all those scopes, we can also generate the token and, of course, save the value because you will need it for your uh, for the script. And the second thing is the URL. So copy that value. So you will have uh, an ID dot apps dot denatrace dot com. Um, so you would need to remove the apps uh, and just keep uh, ID dot uh, live dot denatrace dot com. And uh, this will be required because we're going to use it uh, to uh, spin up and configure the environment. So once you have those three variables, so tenant URL, API token, and operator token uh, that has been created, then uh, the data ingest token, then you can basically uh, start running the deployments. And for running that deployments, there are a few things. Uh, this, we will deploy Istio because we're going to use, uh, we're going to collect um, using a scrap config, the data from Istio. And so make sure to deploy the Istio CTL and uh, add it to your path because the scripts that we're going to run to deploy will requires, will require, of course, Istio CTL. So that's for the requirements. Now, what are you going to expect from this environment? Well, once you have run the, the script, um, first, let's have a look at the namespace in this Cluster, you can see that we have a few things. We have uh, the Dynatrace because we've deployed the Dynatrace operator here. We have the search manager, search manager, which is a requirement for the open telemetry operator. So that's the namespace for the operator ne uh, uh, name, uh, technical components. And uh, also uh, we have Istio, Istio systems, because the control plane will be stored here. And then we have Kepler. So Kepler, you'll see, this is going to be one of the exporters that we're going to try to collect using the service monitor. Uh, and uh, not only, because we're also going to deploy, uh, the, in the scripts, we deploy the Prometheus operator uh, that includes two extra exporters, the CubeSat metrics and the node exporter. And in terms of application, we have the hotel demo, of course, and also I've deployed the Hipster Shop uh, to have two, uh, uh, two type of workloads sitting in the side. So this one is going to co be uh, co uh, collecting uh, metrics and traces in open telemetry format, and the other one will be instrumented by the entries. All right, and on the default namespace, we will have all the other stuff. So let's have a look at a few things. So let's jump into first the default namespace. So if you look at the pods in the default namespace, you will have all the Prometheus stack, node exporter, CubeSat metrics, alert manager, Grafana, and so on. And I have already a daemon set collector. This one is designed to receive the traces, but also receive the open temperature metrics produced by the open temperature demo and also collector logs. So this is going to be the collector to, to basically get data of the environment. Side of that, uh, we will have uh, e the pods in the Kepler namespace. Uh, it deploys, of course, the Kepler uh, exporter. That is, in fact, the uh, daemon set uh, that uh, we, we talked about it in all the episodes. Two, within EPPF probes to collect the, the usage, the resource usage uh, of uh, this, the different, different various workload that is running in this cluster. Uh, on the um, 
On the Hipster Shop, we will see uh, all the various components running here. Um, there is a load, a uh, scrum job running a load test, and you can see that Istio has been injected in this particular namespace. And on the OTL demo, this is going to be, uh, in fact, by the way, uh, in instrumented by the Dynamic Trace agent. But the other namespace, the Open Telemetry demo here, there is no uh, agent injected, it's full Open Telemetry. And all the pods is running except the, the front end, but we don't need the front end in this particular case. So now what we have here is, of course, the uh, Envoy uh, and the control plane uh, is currently producing metrics, but they're already injecting the Prometheus annotation. So we don't need any pod monitor, any service monitor. So the way we're going to do it is uh, doing configuring the right scrap config to collect those metrics. Let's have a look at a few things in this repo. We have first, like I said, two collectors. We have this one, which is our daemon set collector. This one, like I mentioned before, uh, if you scroll down, it's going mainly be there to collect the traces of the open temperature demo and more the logs produced by all the pods of that cluster. So we use the file log re uh, receiver that we talked about in the open telemetry logs tutorial. Here in the metrics, it's mainly uh, receiving the metrics produced by the hotel demo application because it's the only component to produce metrics on the open telemetry format. Now, the thing is, um, the, we're going to deploy another collector, uh, a stateful set collector with to replicate because then the purpose is to play with the target allocator and this one is already enabled with the target allocator uh, you will see that um, uh, we will update it, this later on in this tutorial but we'll first deploy as a target allocator and let's go through uh, the current scrap config available in this collector like uh, so first we enabled yeah, I will scroll down to the bottom but we enable the telemetry uh, of our uh, our collector. And uh, so we have a job to scrap locally the metrics from the collector. That's the one, that's the first job. The second job in the scrap config is to technically, the one we described during the video about the, the scrap configs, we are basically going through the Prometheus annotations that has, may have been added by a few workload in this cluster. So we don't need to create pod monitors. So this scrap config is gonna first uh, only take the uh, workload that has scrap uh, equal to two as an annotation. Uh, and then we update the address, like I mentioned, by looking at the schema, if we need HTTPS or HTTP, we looking, we are collecting the path uh, to replace the metric path. And then we uh, are updating the address to get the port and the address. So that's typically what, what, what this uh, scrap config is doing. Uh, side of that, it's getting the uh, the the namespace uh, Kubernetes namespace from uh, the metadata produced by the Kubernetes SD config that discovers those pods, and same thing we do the pod. So that will be uh, important, uh, and also we drop all the metrics that are the pods that are in in not in uh, in a running state uh, because we don't need necessarily the, this piece. So this is basically the scrap config. So now if we deploy this, uh, I'm gonna briefly explain the pipeline, but then we're going to deploy that, that stateful set. Um, we are uh, going, of course, to convert the metrics because in Dynatrace supports StatD, and this is basically, I should mention about it, a short video about it. Um, we need to, to convert from uh, cumulative to delta because cumulative is Prometheus. Uh, we filter, we drop the histograms because uh, those are not supported in uh, Dynatrace. And we do a few strong transform metrics. Um, and uh, we we uh, basically transform the, uh, the the naming that we had from pod name to uh, pod name to community pod name and namespace to community space space, and uh, and then we use of course the community attributes to enrich the metrics that we have in this uh, in, uh, in from uh, the metrics that we're collecting. 
So that's a very simple pipeline. You can see focused mainly on metrics. So we have metrics. We're using the uh, routing connector. Uh, and the routing connector is here to figure out if we uh, if there is cumulative and if it's cumulative, we will basically convert it. So that's why we have two pipelines, one where it will require us to go to the conversions and the other one, there is no conversions required. So that's about the pipeline. So let's deploy this pipeline in this tenant. All right, it's been created. One quick note. Um, Aside of that, I already deploy this. So I have several service account here that I am uh, deploying um, for the collector and the target allocator. Um, I have the one from the collector that is a daemon set, so not, let's not talk about it. And then we have one for the main collector, the hotel collector, where we add all the required um, uh, access to the various uh, API. And then inside of that, the uh, it will have a target allocator, I can say service account. So uh, make sure to deploy this service account, even if you're when you're gonna use the target allocator, because you need some access to resources uh, for the pod monitors later on we're going to cover, but also mainly for the actual uh, um, Kubernetes as the configs that is not running on a collector, but is running on a service account, on the uh, target allocator. So now that we have deployed this, let's check a few things. If you pay attention to this, uh, to, to this environment here, we can see that first we have a collector, two collectors, and then we the target allocator has been is, is running. So there's been one restart uh, simply for one reason is that the collector starts, it's waiting to get access to the service behind this, this pod, the target allocator, because at the end, he's going to uh, send the query to get the scrap configs that needs to execute. Um, so usually when you deploy the first time the collector, uh, the target allocator takes a few minutes to, to uh, arrive. So that's why you get uh, this this, this uh, restart. So don't, don't be aware of that. Uh, if you pay attention to this, uh, uh, if you have any problems, I would recommend to uh, look at the logs uh, produced in this uh, collector. You can see that it's been started. Uh, the pod watcher component, it's already running and the collector is actually running now. So um, what is interesting is uh, if you go now in Danatrace and you search for metrics, so I can open show you, if you can click search for metrics, um, that will basically show you the metrics that is coming in, ingested. And now uh, we go to the last page. You can see that we are receiving all the Envoy metrics already. So the collector is collecting them uh, automatically. So Dynatrace is not collecting anything about Envoy. What we want to do is to collect metrics from various exporters. And the first thing we're going to do is look at uh, the services that is running in the Kepler namespace. And this is gonna be um, the port 9002 is the actual uh, Kepler uh, exporter. So if we do a port forward, just to look at the metrics produced, um, we are going to um, do some relabeling on the Kepler uh, exporter to avoid collecting those metrics that we may not need. All right, so port 9002 has been forwarded. So now let's open localhost 9002 slash metrics. And we can see the metrics that are coming here. So one thing is that we can see that we have a lot of Go metrics that obviously are not related to the purpose of this exporter, so we don't need it. And then we can see that we have lots of data and we have the container ID. So container ID is interesting to be honest, but I won't be able to use it at all. Uh, to be honest, because uh, here it's going to be, uh, yeah, just an extra dimension in the metric, uh, increase the cardinality for nothing. So I may want to drop this uh, label uh, for obvious reasons, because I won't be able to use it at all uh, when I'm going to report data in the Observe backend. So that's one thing. The second thing is if we scroll down somewhere, I remember there is a PID, like a process. Uh, and uh, let me show you, do, 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 if I scroll down here, container, we have it here, command, container D, and then we have a PID uh, side of that. So honestly, uh, the process ID 
uh, report it back in my observer solution won't I want to have no use case of having it. So obviously here you can see that we have lots of data and this process ID will just increase heavily the, the, the price of that metrics. I want to, so I want technically to drop it. So how you do this uh, with the a pod monitor because the no, service monitor, well, let's see it. So I have created a service monitor here in the Kepler folder. And as you can see, so I'm defining a name, a labels, whatever. I may put the right selectors to select the service that uh, is uh, the one I'm targeting, which is Kepler. Um, I'm limiting to the Kepler namespace to make it more simpler. I make a reference to the port uh, of the service exposed by Kepler. 9002 in the service definition of Kepler is called HTTP, so I'm going to using it. And then I'm I'm in be behind the metric relabeling. I putting the metric relabeling that I need. So I'm say okay, the name if it's Kepler and Core Jewel, drop it because it's not a, a metric that I won't be able to use. I do the same thing for all the metrics starting with Go. I drop those metrics. And like I said, there is two uh, technical uh, labels in that is metrics that I may not use. One is container ID and the second is PID. So I'm making those label drops. So this is going to be basically uh, dropped directly at the source before it's coming to the collector. So this is going to optimizing a bit more my collector pipelines at the end of the day. So let's deploy the Kepler service monitor. First of all, one thing that we want to do here in this pipeline, uh, we want to enable the Prometheus CR. So here you will have to add under the target allocator property, the Prometheus CR, and here we're gonna precise enable to. There is plenty of different uh, uh, options where you can filter to specific service monitor uh, to be uh, target specific components. But in my case, I wanna cover everything. So if you wanna apply this, of course, we will need to deploy it. So I'm gonna use kubectl. Here it is, so I'm applying this, and it will make a warning to make remind that it needs to have the right privileges to access to diverse pod monitors and service monitors. So again, it's a warning. Uh, I have uh, created the right RBAC, so for me, I have no issue. I know that I'm gonna be fine. So if you look at the uh, the pods of uh, that has been produced, Again, we can see that we have our auto collector, the, st the stateful set running. And here we have our target allocator. So let's grab, and you can see here, here it says cache are synced with a service monitor and we cache synced for pod monitor. So it's, it's already started to collect data from pod monitors and service monitors. So now the th second thing that I want to do is uh, I have another uh, service monitor to uh, collect the metrics from uh, the node exporter and kubeset metrics. Here I mainly use service monitor because all those exporters are behind a service. But if you had didn't have any uh, service, then you can use pod monitor instead. In my case here, I'm not doing a relabeling metrics. So uh, if I don't have to change my collector pipelines, which this is a beauty to be honest, and uh, I just apply this and here it is. It's so now we have our two extra service monitors that's been created. So that's fantastic. And which means now, if I don't do anything, I can just go back to data trace to our tenant that we had. And if you go to the metric page, if you scroll to the, the, the bottom, you can see that we have a lot of metrics from Envoy, from, uh, from uh, containers. So we start to have the kubeset metrics coming in. Uh, we start to have uh, lots of metrics and we also have the API server. So you can see all those metrics coming from those exporters uh, without doing any updates, you get it. So now I've searched Kepler and I see the Kepler metrics coming in as well. So it works perf perfectly and you don't have to change anything. Uh, it's a dynamic uh, scrap config where you just create new parameters and those will arrive in automatically in, in your collectors and you will be able to do that. Now that we've seen uh, uh, the scrap config working and reporting data back to uh, the Bozri backend, in our case, 
and trace. One thing that I want to show you uh, is the value of using. So here I don't have any scripts to doing this, but if you look at the service that are running in the default namespace, we obviously have one service for the target allocator, which is exposed on the port 8080. So let's do a, 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 a port forward. Okay, and now let's hit each local host and the port 8080 slash scrap. Okay, scrap configs. So here we can see the actual uh, uh, jobs that has been built. So here we can see that there is a slash metric and it's getting the actual uh, initial scrap config that we've defined uh, previously. And then you can see it created a, a dedicated collector uh, job. And then you can see that there is a service monitor for cube uh, state monitor. Uh, it has everything here. It's created already the scrap config. And then we have the one for the node exporter. Uh, and then we have one for Prometheus Grafana. So there it's getting uh, already the one from that has been deployed by the Prometheus stack, Alert Manager. Uh, we can see that we have another Alert Cube Alert Manager, uh, the API server, uh, the core DNS. Uh, yeah, basically every single uh, service monitor deployed in this cluster at CD were collected directly uh, by the collector. Uh, by the target allocator. But if we scroll down somewhere, we have kubelet as well, interesting. And I'm still looking, we should have, we have Kepler, which is here. So it's been also collecting. So one important thing is you have the job name. Uh, so the next endpoint is to slash job and the job ID. So the job ID would be this one, I guess. So we can say slash jobs instead to get the jobs. And then from there, okay, so we have all the jobs here. And now if we want to, for example, understand the one from Kepler, this is the one, uh, we can actually see the targets. Here it is. So he, all the targets with all the data collected. And you can see there is two collectors. So that's the two collector ID to get the actual uh, um, targets for each individual pods. You can see that it is split it into uh, collector zero and collector one. Let's see the details of this to see what we have in one, one, uh, one collector compared to the other. So here we can see uh, the actual address. That's it for today's tutorial about the target allocator. So first of all, as you can see, the target allocator is simplify a lot the way we can collect metrics within our Kubernetes environment. Of course, if you don't enable the support of the Prometheus CRDs, then you can define your scrap configs in a traditional way in your OpenTree collector, uh, but it's just that the, the detections of the targets will be done at the target allocator level. And then uh, he, he will basically uh, distribute the various jobs or targets to uh, the various collectors available within this collector CRD that we've deployed. So stateful set or deployments. From the moment you enable the Prometheus uh, support, the so CR, I think it's pretty much magic to just having our collector running and no need of adjusting our pipeline anymore. Uh, we can just deploy uh, service monitors and pod monitors, and they will those metrics will automatically arrive uh, into our pipeline and we will have them back in our Zuri backend. So much more simple experience, uh, especially if you deal with metric collections with your collector, uh, it will change, for example, a lot of the work that you have to do to maintain all those, uh, those uh, scrap configs. Small reminder is uh, uh, even if you don't define the scrap configs in the collector, don't worry if you like to use reliable config rules to uh, reduce the cardinality of your metrics or simply uh, drop metrics that you're not interested in, 
don't worry, this is still possible uh, using the service monitor or the part monitor by applying your own relabeling config directly on the service monitor. So if you have specific rules for each new of those uh, um, collect exporters, then you can do it, no worries. And I think it's the best recommended way because you will filter out the source before it's actually come into the collector. So less processing task at the end on the collector side. The, the other thing that I really like is the fact that the target allocator is splitting the metric collections with all the collectors available in the cluster. So that's a good sign to basically uh, load balance the collect the receiver work. But still, I have a big question in my mind. I, I may probably answer it later on. Um, specific, specifically, if you have to convert your metrics from cumulative to delta or delta to cumulative, uh, I think it's important that we make sure, sure we, are, we are sure that one metric is always coming to one collector to avoid uh, some weird conversions at the end. Uh, I will probably produce a dedicated episode about metric conversion because I think it's a theme and it, it makes sense that everyone understand the challenge behind the scene. So uh, just be patient. Uh, I will produce that episode for you and then uh, if it, you're useful, uh, let me know if that makes your life easier. If you enjoyed today's content again, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So see you soon for another episode. Bye.